the third Sunday of Easter. Today's gospel begins with two disciples walking to Emmaus, overcome with sadness, loss, and disappointment. They had hoped Jesus, who was crucified, would be the one to redeem Israel. Yet the risen Christ walks with them and then opens their eyes in the breaking of the bread. Each Sunday, our hearts burn within us as the scriptures are proclaimed and Christ appears to us as bread is broken and wine is poured. The story of Emmaus becomes the pattern of our worship each Lord's Day. The Lord be with you. As we gather to worship in various places, may we be blessed by God who forms us in word, sacrament, and community. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Pastor Stephen Weber from St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Cambridge, Ontario, and I'm glad to have you join us for worship today, while we're all under order to remain at home as much as possible. Thank you to our Minister of Music, Katrina Lowe, for recording a prelude and postlude for us again today. Your music is always a beautiful and important part of our worship at St. Paul's, and we appreciate your gift to us this day. And I know that it goes without saying, but please do watch out for one another. I'll be checking in by phone as much as I'm able with many of our members. If you need assistance, please phone the church office and leave a message and I'll arrange for help. I check frequently for messages. At whatever time and location you are accessing this, thank you for doing so. It is good to be together in whatever way possible in this time of physical distancing. Today, we've been asked to include in our worship a recognition of the Holocaust. So we'll pause for this video from the Jewish Christian Dialogue of Montreal.
Two people traveling, feeling sad, feeling confused, feeling overwhelmed. Two people discovering that the impossible has already taken place and everything is new. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, Alleluia. Let us pray. O oh God, your son makes himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, I'm so very glad that you're here because I know that you're bringing sunshine and joy wherever you are. Everybody knows the game of peekaboo, right? So even though most of us are just too old to play it, let's play peekaboo anyway. Now you see me, now you don't. Peekaboo. So am I still here even though you can't see me? Can you wave at me and say, hi, Pastor Stephen? Now, you know, I can't actually see you or hear you, uh, but I know that you're there. And that's because of a concept called object permanence. It's a skill that you develop when you're about two or three years old. Object permanence means that you realize that objects continue to exist even when they cannot be seen, touched, or sensed in some ways. And you know, that's why babies love peekaboo. When you hide your face, they think that your face actually ceases to exist. And so it's no wonder they are overjoyed when they then get to see you. They thought you, gone, you went away, you disappeared, you didn't exist anymore. And that's what today's sermon is about. Recognizing that Jesus is permanently with us, even when we can't see or feel or sense him with us. So for our prayers, choose your favorite prayer posture, whether that's hands up, uh, ready to receive blessings from God, whether it's hands folded and eyes closed and heads bowed so that you can concentrate, or if it's making an X, the first letter of Christ's name in Greek, across your chest, which feels like a big hug from God. Let us pray. Dear God, help us to trust that you are permanently with us even when we can't see or hear you. And help us to be joyful when we do sense your presence. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Your parents have children's bulletins for you that you're welcome to work on at any time, even while you're listening to the sermon. Eating with the Risen Christ. The colorful story of Jesus' appearance to two disciples on the road to Emmaus answers the question of how Jesus is to be recognized among us. Here, Jesus is revealed through the scriptures and the breaking of bread. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Now on that first Easter day, when Jesus had appeared to Mary Magdalene, two of the disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And Jesus said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? Jesus asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. 
Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, Jesus walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged Jesus strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it's almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So Jesus went in to stay with them. When Jesus was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how Jesus had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. As many of you will know, we Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada Lutherans are in full communion with our sisters and brothers in the Anglican Church of Canada. Full communion means we recognize and value each other's ministries and that we'll work together. So each Christmas and Easter, our National Bishop Susan Johnson and her counterpart in the Anglican Church of Canada, Primate Linda Nichols, send us a video message. They refer to today's Gospel reading in their message, so I thought it would be good to hear from them today. Here's the Easter message from the Primate and the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada National Bishop. At the end of Luke's Gospel, we read the account of the, what we usually know as the road to Emmaus, where, where disciples have um, had the news, good news of the resurrection told to them by the women who were at the tomb, but disbelieve. And two of them head out towards Emmaus. They're walking together, sharing their concern and anxiety and bewilderment, and Jesus appears to them on the road and joins them in their walk, although they don't recognize him. Jesus unfolds the scripture and explains to them why these things needed to happen. At the end of the evening, when evening is drawing nigh, they invite Jesus to join them for dinner. And in the breaking of the bread, Jesus is revealed to them. This story for us symbolizes where we are as both partners in ministry together and in our churches. Together, we are walking side by side in a time when there's much anxiety. We know the good news of the gospel, but we're feeling some fear as we look at the future. Fears of many kinds, fears about decline, fears about the future of our churches. And into the midst of that fear, Christ appears to us, appears to us in each other, appears to us in the good news of the gospel, and reminds us that Christ is with us, alive, here now and calling us to live the gospel in new ways together. And we take delight in doing that as Anglican and Lutheran churches. Susan and I are enjoying our partnership as leaders of our churches, as those called to give hope and to stand together. And so we invite you to celebrate the good news of the gospel in Jesus Christ at this Easter time. Lift your head from anxiety. Know that Christ is with us as together we say, Christ is risen. Alleluia. Today's gospel reading is a favorite for many of us, and I can think of at least three reasons for favoring this story 
of the road to Emmaus. First of all, the story reminds us that it can indeed be difficult for us to recognize the presence of God in our daily lives, and that's okay. The resurrected Jesus was walking with these disciples as they journeyed to Emmaus, and these disciples don't even know it. It can indeed be difficult for us to recognize the presence of God in our daily lives. That's the first reason for the popularity of this text. Secondly, this story proclaims that God is always with us, even when we don't recognize God's presence in our lives. Jesus walked with those disciples and was teaching them, interpreting the scriptures to them, so that their hearts were burning within them as Jesus opened the scriptures for them. God is present and at work in our lives, even when we don't recognize God's presence. So that's the second reason for the popularity of today's gospel story. And a third reason that we value this text so much is that it invites us to ponder the resurrection. Fundamentalistic churches require that their members believe in a bodily resurrection. But what does this text teach us about Jesus' resurrection? Obviously, the resurrected Jesus had a body. His disciples could see him. They could touch Jesus. They could feel the wounds from his crucifixion. In some of the post-resurrection stories, Jesus eats with his disciples, and you need a body to do that. But Jesus' post-resurrection body was not quite a regular body. Last Sunday, we heard of two occasions when Jesus' post-resurrection body passed through locked doors. Not a regular body. Furthermore, Jesus' post-resurrection body was different enough that Mary didn't recognize Jesus on Easter morning, nor do Cleopas and his companion recognize their Lord on the road to Emmaus in today's gospel story. And Jesus' post-resurrection body can disappear at will. The Greek phrase that Luke, the gospel writer, used means to become invisible, implying that Jesus was still in fact there. The disciples just couldn't see him. He was invisible. Why do some fundamentalistic denominations insist on believing in a bodily resurrection when Jesus' resurrection body was so different from a regular body that his disciples didn't easily recognize him when his body could move through locked doors and vanish at will? Not a regular body at all. So to me, it's not important whether or not Jesus was bodily resurrected. What's important to me is that Jesus is still with us today. I can sense his presence. He helps me. He walks with me. He comforts and guides me. To me, that's the important part of the resurrection, that Jesus is with me today. But what do you do when you can't sense the presence of God? What do you do when it seems as if God just isn't there? From the gospel story of the road to Emmaus, we know how difficult it can be to know that Jesus is with us. What do you do when you can't sense God's presence in your life? Well, I think that Mr. Rogers has the answer for us. You know, my mother used to say a long time ago, whenever there would be any really cat catastrophe that was on the, in the movies or, or on the air, she would say, always look for the helpers. There, were, there will always be helpers, you know, even just on the sidelines. That's why I think that if news programs could make a conscious effort of showing rescue teams, of, of showing who, uh, medical people, anybody who is coming into a place where there's a tragedy, to be, to be sure that they include that. Because if you look for the helpers, you'll know that there's hope. Can't feel God's presence? Can't see God at work? Does God not seem real to you? 
In the face of the senseless mass shooting in Nova Scotia, do you wonder where God is? Does the Holocaust tempt you, tempt you to lose faith? Look for the helpers. For where you see love, there you are seeing God. Acts of loving kindness make our invisible God visible. This past week, I read in the Toronto Star about an act of love in which I saw God at work. Here's what the article said. On Monday, Kim Rattersma, who only recently moved to Kitchener, witnessed an act of helping while waiting at the checkout line of Central Fresh Market. There was a bit of a commotion, and she and her young son saw a man, thin in his 30s or 40s in tattered clothes, obviously distraught. He had just been caught shoplifting. They couldn't hear clearly, but it sounded like he was saying, but I'm hungry, but I'm hungry. He wasn't trying to defend himself. A man in a suit was talking to him saying, it's okay, we will feed you, we'll feed you, we will get you food. He was very compassionate in interrogating the man. As they watched, the man in the suit pulled out broccoli, tomatoes, a pepper, and onions from the man's bag. Radersma didn't know exactly what happened next because they checked out and had to exit the store. But after they had unloaded their groceries and were putting the cart away, they saw another man emerging with a full bag of groceries. That's when they saw another customer quietly put a $20 bill in the man's hand. By this time, Radersma was near the man and he was sobbing. He was quietly sobbing. It was so touching the way he was touched by people's compassion. I had tears in my own eyes, Radersma said. The man in the suit was the store owner, Mike Williamson. It was really nothing, he said. We had a person that was very desperate. He was just starving. He kept saying, this COVID thing, this COVID thing, I'm hungry, I have to eat. I said, don't worry, we're going to take care of you. Williamson said he got the man a sandwich, soft drinks and some sweet goods to get him by for the night until he got to a shelter. This happens often, he said. As the disciples on the road to Emmaus learned, it can indeed be difficult to sense God's presence and activity in life. So look for the helpers. Wherever you see love, God is at work, invisible, but present. May we be given eyes and hearts to see God at work in loving action. Amen. We join now in singing the hymn of the day, We Walk by Faith and Not by Sight.
prayers today are adapted from those prepared by Pastor Rick Price of Lunenburg Lutheran Parish in Nova Scotia. Celebrating the victory of love over death, we offer our prayers to God, saying, God of Easter, and responding, hear our prayer. God who comes in bread, you sustain life through the most basic of foods. Show us your risen presence in the basics of life. Make our hearts burn within us. God of Easter, hear our prayer. God who comes in wine, you enrich life in community and celebration. Show us how to live together, even as we struggle with our current realities. Make our hearts burn within us. God of Easter, hear our prayer. God who comes in story, you remind us who we are through familiar words and through the unfamiliar drama of our lives. Open our hearts to the story you are telling us, the story of which we are a part, the story you are composing for the sake of creation. Make our hearts burn within us as you teach us and travel with us. God of Easter, hear our prayer. God who comes in sadness, your presence is promised most profoundly when we are hurting, when we are overwhelmed, when we see no way through. Reassure us that you do walk with us in our difficult days, even when we can't feel your presence. Give us faith when we lose hope. Make our hearts burn within us. God of Easter, hear our prayer. God who comes in illness, we remember those who are sick, those whose health is compromised, those who are facing death. We also remember those who are serving them in their pain and isolation. May we all support each other as we embrace the ministry of healing and love to which you call us. Make our hearts burn within us. God of Easter, hear our prayer. God who comes in the ordinary, free us from looking for you only in the special or the extraordinary. Free us to encounter you in the everyday. Make our hearts burn within us, even now. God of Easter, hear our prayer. And now we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be with you always. We share that peace. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.